Please stand. Good morning. My dear friends, let us begin this Holy Mass celebrating the life of Aidan Barry as we begin all our prayers in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I bless the remains of Aidan Aloysius Berry with the holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with Christ by likeness to his death, so shall we be united by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Aidan Aloysius Berry put on Christ, in the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Aidan, also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. My dear friends, please be seated for the first reading from Ecclesiastes. Emily. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, 
and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace, the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
Be ambitious for the higher gifts. And I am going to show you a way that is better than any of them. If I have all the eloquence of men or of angels, but speak without love, I am simply a gong booming or a cymbal clashing. If I have the gift of prophecy, understanding all the mysteries there are, and knowing everything, and if I have faith in all its fullness to move mountains, but without love, then I am nothing at all. If I give away all that I possess, piece by piece, and if I even let them take my body to burn it, but am without love, it will do me no good whatever. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of him, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. After talking a few days ago with Bill and Anna and Sarah, I'm convinced at this point that words aren't the most important thing. They're important, but the what's most important today is our prayers, our presence, and our love and support at the death of our loved one, Aiden. I was thinking today of the day our Lord died. Few words, but a lot of prayers, presence, love, and support. And I thought of the station of Simon helping Jesus carry the cross. I'd like to thank each and every one of you, 
helping each other carry the cross of the death of your beloved Aiden. And I was thinking of Veronica when Jesus was walking to Calvary, uh, uh, to Calvary, his place of execution, and she dried his tears and wiped his face. And I want to thank each and every one of you for literally or figuratively wiping each other's tears at the death of your loved one, Aiden. And I was thinking of Mary at the foot of the cross in Latin, Mater Staba, she stood there. Thanks for standing by Aiden in all his years here on this, on this earth. Good times, challenging times. Thanks for being with him. Because the worst feeling we could have is no one cares. Also, I've been reflecting this week and praying for the family and, and talking to Aiden because I believe in the communion of the saints. So I talk to all the deceased all the time. And I talk to Aiden and I talk to other my deceased friends and priests and relatives. And I believe we have many questions today. Why my son? Why my brother? Why my uncle? Why my nephew? Why my cousin? Why my friend? Why so young? Why not a person 90 years old in place of Aiden? And all I could come up with is that what I really believe that what God wants from us now are not questions, but faith. A faith which Aiden believed in. That God will raise Aiden, and he will raise him in his own way, in his own time. I also thought, why can't God raise Aiden from the dead as he rose uh, Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary in the gospel today? But God will do it in his own time. He will raise Aiden from the dead. And then I listened to the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, which a lot of times is read at weddings and at times at funerals. And when I heard the reading today of being love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, love does not put on airs, it is not stabbish, it always thinks about the other person. I thought about Aiden. And how I got there was, I looked at the reading on Sunday, the Gospel on Sunday. And the Gospel on Sunday is Jesus talking to his apostles and they want to be great and important. They want this political position with the Lord. They can understand that he's going to suffer, die, and rise from the dead. And Jesus takes this little child and he says, he who receives this little child receives me and God who sent me. And what, God, what our Lord was saying is that the child is overlooked, really overlooked year, years ago, had no rights at all, but it's overlooked today in our corporate and secular society, which has become more secular and less Judeo-Christian. The only people that are important, and I shared that with with Bill and Anna and Sarah, are people from 21 to 50 in our country. Try to find a job after 50 years of age. They don't want you. You're too old. They don't know what to do with me. I'm 74. It's, it's the way it is. But Aiden was a person who looked and served the people who were overlooked. And he did it as a servant, not as a master. And Anna gave a beautiful story. Uh, uh, she shared with, with, with me and Bill and Sarah when we spoke about how they were walking down the street and this blind man wanted to cross Western Avenue. Now, Aiden directed him, but also giving him dignity. He didn't like grab him and say, okay, we're going to do this, you know the macho way, he took him and he just tried to direct him across the street, get him across the street safe, gave the man dignity, and he was no, he was no master but brother to him. And also with the homeless and all that, he looked at people who were overlooked. 
And there was the gospel for his birthday tomorrow. And it really kind of really fit. And I think God always speaks to us in different ways. It's the gospel for this weekend. So I was looking at that. So we have a person who is love and kind and has a great sense of humor and funny, as some of you guys really know. Uh, I didn't check Facebook, but somebody told me he really is a funny guy, too. Uh, so we have this person who really reflected God's love because he accepted uh, Christ and, and, and God when he accepted people in his life that were overlooked. And also, being overlooked doesn't mean you have to be homeless or you have to be the blind person. Sometimes the person overlooked is your brother and sister in your home, your family, your friends that need someone at that time. My friends, today we give thanks for the gift of Aidan Berry and how in so many ways, by being loved and kind and patient and, and funny, has really shown us the face of God. And Aidan, may you rest in peace. My dear friends, I ask you to please stand now for the prayers of the faithful. Please respond to each intercession. Lord, hear our prayer. For Aidan Berry, that the Lord may receive him with loving arms and lead him to everlasting life with the saints, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the family and friends left behind in the wake of Aidan's passing, that we may find mutual support and comfort for our grief, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the church and faithful followers of Christ everywhere, that we may grow in the charity and peace of Jesus, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For, all the, for all the families, that with patience and understanding, they may share their home, lives, hopes, and dreams with one another, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who suffer from illness, loneliness, abuse, or despair, that they may find consolation and healing in the unending love of God, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those we have loved who have already passed on in eternal life, that they may welcome Aden into heaven and remain with him forever, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pause now to remember all of, other, all of our other needs, which stay unspoken in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All loving, kind, and generous God, we ask you to hear all our prayers, the ones we shared this morning, those deep within our hearts for Aden, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our light in the darkness, our hope and despair, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. My friends, please be seated.
Let us pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Aden, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. In Jesus, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Please kneel. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all your holy people. We ask you to remember, especially this morning, your servant, Aidan Berry, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Aidan, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so now we have the courage to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us offer God Christ peace to one another. My dear friends, we'll be entering the communion rite. We had our church closed for about two and a half months. We've been open now again for about 16 months. We never had a spread for communion. Uh, we ask you if you're going to receive Holy Communion, you're Catholic, to please sanitize your hands. We have, we have bottle sanitizers and automatic sanitizers. The last thing I do is sanitize my hands so we're very safe. Uh, and if you're not, Catholic, and you would like to come up for a blessing, just cross your hands and I'll give you a blessing. I'll begin, I'll begin on this side first, 
and then I'll walk over to the other side over here. Behold Jesus, our light, our love, and our hope. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy. You should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. I would like to now invite Anna up to share a few words.
Thank you all for being here today. While my heart is broken, it brings me great joy to see you all here and remember all the people Aiden loved and who loved Aiden. Aiden Aloysius Berry, where to begin? Aiden was a sweet, kind, gentle soul with a huge heart. He loved his family dearly and our love for him cannot be described. To know Aiden was to love Aiden, truly. One of my first memories of Aiden was giving him a bath in his little baby bathtub. I remember him reaching up to touch my face and even then, the way he looked at you was with such kindness. I thought, wow, this is gonna be so much fun to have a little brother. As most of you know, I am quite the tomboy and I was so excited to pick out clothes for him and style his hair. Our age difference was just enough so I saw him as something to take care of and look out for and stand up for. It created a relationship of kindness and love. Although we were both competitive, it was always us against the world. Recently, like many, we started playing chess. And he would always set up the pieces calm in such a way you didn't notice. He was always the dark color, giving you the first move. Once, a little put off, I said, what, you don't think I'll... <laughs> what, you don't think I can win if I go first? I messed that up, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I lost in three moves. <sighs> there were so many years between leaving for college, aside from the short trips back a few months here and there, to him living so close to me in Chicago. I remember talking to him on the phone two summers ago and saying, why don't you just come and live in Chicago? It really is awesome. And I would love to see you more. He responded, I really want to, Anna. I just don't want to mess anything up if I come there. That's how he was. He was always trying his best for me. Nonsense, Aiden. We can accomplish anything when we are here together. Six months later, he was living in Chicago. He moved right in the dead of winter. It's always the best time to move. We were together all the time. Bike rides, dog walks, board game nights, movie nights. It was awesome. It felt like all those years we were not together never happened. Aiden was wildly intelligent. He loved to read from an early age. When he was 10 years old in fourth grade, while other kids were reading Captain Underpants from the school book fair, he was reading War and Peace from a cell phone. No one was sure how much he really understood of the book until his Iowa National Standardized Test results came back, confirming he read at a 12th grade level in fourth grade. His many academic accolades included his acceptance into the Duke TIP program from seventh grade and into high school. The most aiding thing about it all was that these successes were never because he spent hours on or honestly even completed his homework, but because of his inherent quiet intelligence. There was a time this winter that Jeopardy was playing pretty much any time you walked into Sarah's and Maya's house. And one particular night, we watched four or five episodes in a row. Aiden answered all but six or seven questions right. Sarah asked him if he would ever apply. He just kind of laughed it off and didn't think too much of it. We often joked that we didn't need to Google anything when Aiden was around. He was such an incredible wealth of knowledge and was almost always right, almost. Aiden's sense of humor was like none other. Halloween was always our favorite holiday. The other family, other families buy Christmas gifts far in advance, but the berries we buy Halloween decorations. I mean, we did it big. The entire month of September, Aiden and I would set up decorations, fine tuning the most scary shadows, planning our hiding places. We would get home from school and immediately get to work. I felt like I never, 
I never felt like he didn't understand or he was too little to get it. And when the big day finally arrived and we got our chance to scare people, we did. Our parents would tell us not to scare the little kids, but Aiden had a different take on that. If it was dark out, you were out, equal opportunity. Remember, he was like six, seven, and eight years old. He would climb this little tree that overhung the sidewalk, which could only support the weight of a small child, so nobody would ever be like looking at it. It was like the perfect hiding place. Everyone was distracted looking at the fog and the graves and the spooky lighting and ah, this little kid came flying at you, probably causing you to change your underwear for the sake of a better word. Once they realized he was so little, it was just hilarious. No one could be mad at a little kid for coming out, coming out at them. He would say, these kids don't just get free candy, nothing is ever free. This summer was the summer of golf, and if anyone tells you they're good at golf, they're lying. I take a lot of things too seriously. Aiden, not so much. I hate taking more than one shot, it's cheating. Aiden, he would take as many as he could get. He almost always took two shots from the tee box, mildly ir irritated. I said something smart and he responded, Anna, it's called a mulligan. <sighs> Sarah once hit the tree, the ball popped off, saving it from the water, and Aiden yelled. I mean, like, he, like, yelled. Great use of the landscape! Like, in the middle of everyone's swing. Kind of caused a ruckus. Aiden loves history. He dreamt of becoming an archeologist from an early age. That dream had a rocky moment when, at the age of seven, he was petrified on vacation to Universal Studios when the dinosaurs came to life. <laughs> the Jurassic... <laughs> he was cowering in his seat on the Jurassic Park ride, but he survived. He recovered and the dream lived on. Recently, he started to work toward becoming a history professor to share his wealth of knowledge and interest in the subject with the world. Aiden was always an old soul, wise beyond his years, endlessly patient and gentle to a fault. He would befriend even the hardest to reach souls and leave them better than he found them. Our cousin Liam Barry told me a story the other day that I would like to share with you. When they were little and playing around the camp, the family camp up in Canada, they found a daddy long leg and Aiden wanted to name him. Liam said it opened his world. Like these things have little souls and these little living creatures that we could name them and make them our friends. On the next trip to Canada, Liam tried to bring his new friend home. He had named him Steve. Tim and Patty weren't having that. Steve's staying there. Above all else, Aiden loved his dog, Mosley. I had the great fortune of going with him to pick him up that day. I think that was the happiest day of his life. The photo I took falls short of the emotion exuding from his pores that day. On the three hour drive home, Aiden crawled in the back seat, laid pretzeled in a wildly uncomfortable position and placed Mosley on his chest. That image will never leave my mind. Mosley possesses many of Aiden's traits, extremely kind, not a mean bone in his big body, great with kids and other dogs, an incredibly loud bark. Aiden also lacked the ability for an inside voice, and above all, loving, a gentle giant. I promise we'll take good care of him, Aiden. Aiden was a good Catholic. He loved the church and God. He was not one to press his religious beliefs onto anyone else. He knew the importance of his relationship with God above all else. 
and I thank him for this. Without it, we would not be able to have this mass or this eulogy. I thank him for sharing this beautiful space with us and hope everyone can see the beauty in what he sought here. We will miss your laugh, your company, your love, your kindness. I will miss walking the dogs, playing chess, going on bike rides and road trips. I will miss talking and listening. I will miss the photos you sent of the food you cooked and hearing about the new restaurants you tried. I will miss growing older with you, happily watching you achieve all that you set out to do. We will miss you, Aiden, and nothing will ever fill the gaps in our heart you leave behind. In this moment of pain and loss, I have to think about all that you accomplished, all those you made feel loved, and your time here on this earth was far too short. You will always be my baby brother on Robino Road. You will always be that brilliant young man living walking distance away in Chicago. You will never be forgotten, not even for one second. You will always be loved. Oh, 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 oh. 
Thank you, Anna. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Aidan, for whom we have celebrated this holy sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light, love, and peace through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Aidan. May our, may our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet Aidan again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Choirs of angels lead you into paradise, and may the martyrs come to welcome you, to bring you home into the holy city, so you may dwell. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Aidan in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you gave Aidan in this life, his family and his friends. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward to us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, Aidan, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother, Aidan, forever. Aidan, may the angels welcome you into paradise. May the martyrs come and welcome you and take you to that holy city, that new and eternal Jerusalem. 